Next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Jackie Bailey. To ask the Scottish Government when the Crown Office was first notified of the allegations of mortgage fraud against Christopher Hales. Lord Advocate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As the Crown has made clear on a number of occasions recently, the case of Christopher Hales was first brought to its attention by the Law Society of Scotland at a meeting on the 18th of December 2014. Can I thank the Lord Advocate for that response? We understand that the Law Society told the Crown Office informally in December 2014 about the Christopher Hales case, then in April 2015, and then formally in July 2015. Does he believe that there should be an investigation into the process of communication between the Law Society and the Crown Office, given that additional opportunities for alleged mortgage fraud could have arisen due to the delay? Will he order such an inquiry? And can I also ask the Lord Advocate, when he instructed the police to investigate, um, and if, as we understand it, was within six days of receiving the report, has he set a deadline for the police to submit a report to the Crown Office? And if this is not the case already, will he consider so doing? Lord Advocate. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, there's a number of questions uh, in uh, have been asked of me. Dealing firstly with the, the last question, uh, it is correct to say that on the 3rd of July 2015, uh, the police, Police Scotland, were instructed uh, to investigate uh, the allegations which were the subject of the Scottish Solicitors Disciplinary Tribunal. Uh, the report was received on that day, considered by Crown Office, and six days later, I think it was the 9th, uh, that formal instructions uh, were issued to the police. I can't set a timescale for it because these are complex matters. But what I can say uh, is that uh, the Serious and Organised Crime Division of the Crown Office are in regular contact with both the, the Law Society uh, and indeed the Police Scotland who are dealing with this matter to monitor progress and to assist in a number of legal matters which have arisen. Uh, uh, as a result of the investigation. In relation to uh, whether I uh, think that there should be an inquiry or whether I uh, should order an inquiry, firstly, I don't have the power to order an inquiry, and secondly, I don't think that there should be an inquiry, and let me explain why. Let me just take you through the timeline uh, of uh, interaction between uh, the Crown Office or the Serious and Organised Crime Division of the Crown Office and the Law Society. There are quarterly meetings at which uh, a, quite a large number of matters are discussed, including um, issues of whether or not the Law Society will make a referral in relation to a solicitor who has been struck off or is the subject of a disciplinary finding made against them. On the 18th of um, uh, December, uh, we, the Crown Office, were first advised uh, of uh, the issue. Uh, the Crown Office was advised that the uh, matter was under consideration of a referral to the Crown. Uh, the Crown noted the findings of the Scottish Solicitors Disciplinary Tribunal uh, and uh, also noted that neither uh, the clients uh, nor the properties involved were named uh, at the meeting. Uh, the next uh, time it was discussed, as you rightly said in your supplementary question, was in April uh, of this year, the 28th to be precise. Again, the issue was raised uh, and uh, it was noted that um, it was still under consideration um, a referral by the Law Society to the Crown. Uh, again, neither uh, the clients nor the properties were intimated at that time. Now, following these meetings, um, the Crown was in contact with the Law Society uh, to discuss uh, what needs to be obtained, what evidence um, needs to be obtained, what files, who has them, and a whole host of other matters. Now, it's not, I don't think it would be productive, given the fact there's a live investigation, to get into these details. And I would hope that Jackie Bailey would accept from me uh, that preparatory work was undertaken with the Law Society to deal with the matter if and when there was a formal uh, referral. Uh, as indicated, um, the referral was made on the 3rd of July 2015. We were advised on the 1st of July 2015 
by the Law Society uh, that they require to get authorisation from the Guarantee Fund Subcommittee to formally refer the case to the Crown Office. Now, that is a Law Society procedure. Uh, and you must understand what we are dealing with here. We are dealing with a criminal investigation at which a person's liberty uh, could be in jeopardy. So these things cannot be dealt with quickly or by word of mouth. There is a process. Uh, and uh, that process uh, was carried out by the Law Society and authorisation uh, was given for a referral by the Guarantee Fund subcommittee to refer the case. Once that authorisation was given, uh, the referral was made on the 3rd of July 2015. When I say referral, uh, uh, that is a formal referral from the, the Law Society of Scotland. It contains a whole load of uh, information which the Crown would need. And, of course, the Crown has been working or in contact with the Law Society in relation to matters um, in anticipation of the referral uh, being made. Uh, as indicated, um, the referral, I think, was received on the 3rd of July, which is a Friday. And I think it was formally referred to the police, or the police were instructed the following uh, Thursday. The first time that the Crown was made aware of the clients uh, and the properties uh, was on the 3rd of July 2015. Uh, the Crown was not aware of the clients and the properties prior to that. Uh, the, there would be issues of client confidentiality and data protection, but of course that's not my problem or that was not my issue. That's a matter for the Law Society in their dealings with the matter. But I can assure you, and I've spoken to the persons at the meeting, and I've also uh, had sight of the notes of the meeting, uh, the first time that the Crown was made aware of the identity of the clients and the properties involved was the 3rd of July 2015. Jackie Bailey. Can I thank the Lord Advocate for that response? I think you know, the public would probably not understand why it takes more than a year for the disciplinary tribunal to notify the Crown Office. And our concern should always be that vulnerable people in that intervening period could have been caught up and exploited in alleged mortgage fraud. But it would appear from press reports that there are not one but three lawyers that have faced disciplinary action by the Law Society. In all, in all cases, there has been one common denominator. Was the Crown Office aware at any stage of these additional cases and had connections been made by the Law Society that were then notified to the Crown? And given the seriousness of the allegations, has the Crown Office taken any steps through the proceeds of Crime Act to freeze the assets of any of those who might be implicated? Well, dealing with the, the, the last point in relation to the proceeds of crime, uh, no, the Crown has not uh, yet uh, taken steps under the proceeds of crime legislation. I think that's premature for that to, to, to be done uh, or considered. But the Crown, uh, in any criminal investigation, uh, always has uh, at the forefront uh, potential proceeds of crime. But there has to be established criminality uh, before that can uh, be embarked upon. Uh, secondly, in relation to uh, other solicitors uh, who may or may not be involved, and I have to be very careful about what I say, what I can tell you uh, is that in relation to the referral on the 3rd of July 2015, uh, as far as I'm aware, and I've read the referral this morning, and I'll check it uh, after uh, these proceedings uh, are concluded, uh, as far as I'm aware, there's only one solicitor which is referred to. Uh, however, uh, you have placed me on notice, and I will certainly make inquiries uh, into that matter. Margaret Fraser. Uh, thank you. In what circumstances would the Crown Office ask Police Scotland to investigate uh, any other person connected with the solicitor subject to the Law Society's judgment? Lord Advocate. I gave some consideration to that because I think it's a highly relevant question. Um, the referral to Police Scotland is in relation to the solicitor who was the subject of the Scottish Solicitor's Disciplinary Tribunal finding. Uh, and the police uh, have been instructed to investigate the property transactions relating to that finding, resulting in the solicitor being struck off. Police Scotland have a duty 
uh, in any criminal investigation to follow the evidence uh, and where that takes them. So if during a police investigation evidence arises that other persons have been involved in criminality and fraud or whatever uh, crime uh, that the police have uncovered evidence uh, of, then uh, Police Scotland, uh, I have uh, complete faith in them that they will act and do the right thing, as will the Crown. Thank you.